In this video, we're going to talk about the external carotid artery. One of the terminal bifurcations of the common carotid, typically commencing around the level of the fourth cervical vertebra, descends superiorly and laterally to terminate in the substance of the parotid gland. Its branches span an impressive circumference to supply much of the structures of the neck and head, but none of its intracranial contents. That's the job of its uh, sibling, the internal carotid artery. To improve our perspective on these branches, we're going to make all the bones of the skull transparent and show you just the external carotid isolated here in this teal color and all of the branches extending across the surface of the scalp towards viscera of the neck and to the deep and superficial structures of the head. We're going to go through all of these structures one by one. And to begin with, we'll remove all of the branches to keep things simple. We'll be using the mnemonic SALFO PMS, just an acronym rather than a long-winded sentence this time. The first up for discussion is the superior thyroid artery, which originates at the carotid bifurcation and supplies the thyroid gland with its arterial blood. That's S for the superior thyroid artery. We have A for the ascending pharyngeal next, which ascends medially and superiorly to supply much of the structures of the pharynx, muscular, the constrictors, stylopharyngeus. It also contributes to the supply of the hypoglossal, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. We next have the lingual artery, which true to its name supplies the floor of the mouth and the tongue. That's the lingual artery there. We then have F for the facial artery, which courses anteriorly deep to the submandibular gland, just here, before ascending across the inferior border of the mandible to make this really tortuous course across the face toward the nasolabial fold. Two important branches of the facial that we'll mention before moving on are the inferior and superior labial arteries. We then have the occipital artery, which departs just here and has a wide network of branches contributing to the supply of the sternocleidomastoid muscle down here, the auricle, so the external ear, the structures surrounding the mastoid process, and then the occipital region of the scalp. Here. We then have the posterior auricular artery, which passes lateral to the styloid process of the temporal bone to supply the auricle and the scalp in a distribution more anterior than that of the occipital. If we make our mandible transparent now, we'll get a nice view of the maxillary artery, which is the next branch heading towards the pterygopalatine fossa here and supplying much of the deep structures of the face. This is one of the terminal branches of the external carotid artery, the other of which is the superficial temporal, which has this beautiful branching pattern over the scalp, anteriorly across the parietal region all the way back to the border of the occipital. So that's it for the branches of the external carotid, which follow the mnemonic SALFO PMS. Let's go back to the start and talk about some important anatomical relations now. The first anatomical relation that we'll point out is an important landmark of the neck. It is the carotid triangle which is a, an imaginary space made by the borders of the superior belly of the omohyoid, the posterior belly of the digastric, and the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It's relevant for us because the first five branches of the external carotid, the salfo part of our mnemonic, all depart from the carotid triangle. If we remove the sternocleidomastoid, we can point out a few more 
important relations. You'll see this extensive venous network, which, which just about mirrors the, the distribution of the, the branches of the external carotid, all coming from either the internal jugular vein or the retromandibular vein just here. These muscles that we mentioned earlier, the uh, posterior belly of the digastric, as well as the stylohyoid muscle, are important because they're effectively the separation between the external carotid, just here, and the internal carotid, here. In terms of structures of the nervous system, we have the ansa cervicalis, close neighbor to the uh, bifurcation of the common carotid. We have the trunk of the facial nerve here as well. Lastly, we have the parotid gland from where all of this really began. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.